Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Magicians. A very interesting episode. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I love that Alice ended up throwing Plover into the poison room. I was like, oh, are we going to find out where she threw him? And it's like, okay, that's going to be interesting because we saw what that did to... um. Penny. I mean, there is a lot of books in there, so I don't know if he's going to take advantage of that, but it's not like it can really do him much good. Uh, he can't really get out of there, so he's going to basically die of super cancer because, uh, you know, that's literally what was killing Penny. So I'm curious to see, you know, what ends up happening in that regard. Like, is he just done? And I even love it later on when Alice is bringing this up to Quentin because she's he's like, well, you did just kill my favorite author. It's like, despite all the terrible stuff he does, it's that interesting thing of like, well, do you know? It's like, oh, yeah, like the... What is the, um, God, uh, Fillory books are his favorite books, and, like, that's his author's favorite author, but it's like, yeah, you also found out about all that terrible, terrible shit that he's just a terrible, terrible human being, so, because even Alice is like, well, does that make me a better person or worse person? He, even he was like, I don't know. It's that kind of, like, it's trying to, I guess, trying to separate the artists from the evil shit that they've done type of situation. So it is, it is kind of interesting because Alice is doing whatever she can to try. And, you know, because for her, it's like, because Q's like, hey, like the fact of the matter is I am trying, you know, I'm going to have to end up killing, you know, Elliot. I've already got that on my plate. I don't have enough space in my mind to deal with the us situation, which Alice is like, this isn't just about us. The fact of the matter is I'm trying to make up for the pile, the mountain of shit I created in this situation. And it's so interesting because it wasn't until this episode that it really kicked in my head. Like, obviously, Elliot's a friend, a dear friend and everything. But then I think the extra element is what they dive into in this episode because Elliot and Quentin had that entire life when they were searching for the keys last season. Like when they, you know, the Mosaic episode. And it didn't click in my head to think about that. That's probably why that hits him even harder. Because this, and in a different timeline, that's someone that he led an entire life, happy life with. They raised a family together, you know? So, and that actually plays into the episode. But I'll get to that soon enough. So, But I think that's even more reason why Quentin does it. I mean, to be fair, Quentin cares about all the people that are important to him. Like that, so I'm curious. Maybe that might be the extra oomph, you know, that makes him care even more. Why he's taking this whole um, Elliot situation just as hard as Margo is, you know. So that's my thought process behind it. So, because you know, it's interesting because he is basically taking it after like the same level he is the way he was taking it with the whole um, the kind of equivalency would be like, um, geez, Alice when Alice died, and you know. I think he's taking it just as hard as that situation, which speaks volumes, and I'll kind of talk about that later on, too. Well, we'll go ahead and talk about it now. Um, the fact of the matter is, I don't know who I'd want Quentin to be with, like, because there's always been part of my brain, you know, for most of the show, it's like, I like him and Alice. I really like him and Alice to be together, so I part of me wants him, me, for him and Alice to get together, but there's always been a part of me, kind of like, um... Hyman, who even Hyman kind of is kind of like a whole, oh, he wants Julia and Quentin together too, which I do too. But now it's kind of like, oh, the him and Elliot thing. It's like, well, we saw what their life was like. They, you know, the bonds that they've kind of created over the course of the series. It's like, there's definitely something there. I mean, and it was so interesting the way Quentin had phrased that too, because we got a side of that conversation we never got last season, where it's like, Elliot, like, Quentin was like, hey, let's, let's actually do that. Like, I mean, it, it's like, it's a surefire thing. Like, how often do you get a surefire thing when it comes to love? Love is very, you know, it, it can work and it may not. But the fact is, we know for sure that it works between us. But, you know, you know, Elliot, you know, being scared. And he's like, when I do what I do when I'm scared, I run away. The fact of the matter is, he tried to make excuses to be like, it was just those circumstances that led us to being those people and falling in love like that. We aren't those people outside of that same situation, so it won't work out. You know, it's like, I love you, Quentin, but that's that's not who we are, so it would never work out. You know, he was just scared because it would have it would have been something really real, which, you know, I think it, it just it would have been complicated. Like, I think Elliot doesn't do well when it comes to, like, I mean, in, in the past, he, you know... 
when he's opened up his heart to people, it hasn't always ended well, like the whole Mike situation, like how that broke him. So, you know, he's reluctant to kind of open his heart up to something, especially when it's like, yo, we had an entire life together. Like, that makes you go, like, this might be some true love type of shit. And so, it, you know, no, that's enough to scare you off to be like, no, 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 no. That's, it, I know that I could be extremely happy, but it's just, you know, being happy in such a degree is enough to kind of scare you, and you know, in its own weird, messed up way, you know? So, it's just kind of interesting to me. Like, I don't know. Like I said, there's still that part of me. It's like, I want things between him and Alice to work out, but I don't know if they will. Because he'll, I don't know if he'll be able to forgive Alice for what she did. Julia sure as hell didn't. Julia gave him her middle finger. And she's like, she does realize I literally saved your life, right? And it's like, yeah, but it's like, and even Quentin's like, you could probably save my life 50 times. But the fact is, I loved you, but you couldn't trust in that, you know? So, I don't know. Like I said, there's part of me that hopes that they get back together. But maybe this whole thing is set up the potential to be like, hey, Quentin and Elliot. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how that ends up playing out. But especially, like, there's less and less time, like, as the series progresses, there's less and less likely to be a Quentin and Julia, especially because the whole Penny 23 situation, which I love that Penny's showing up, like, oh, yeah, I want to be helpful and everything, and then you have Shoshana be like, ah, you're not necessary, so bounce. He Because he even left Margo high and dry, because Margo was like, yo, let me tag along I catch a ride with you to go pick up my birthright. It's like, yeah, but you brought your fuck buddy along. It's like, you go, me and Josh are cool. I also brought him because he can cook. And he's like, yo, me and Pitt, me and Julia are cool. And just, you know, so it's kind of interesting. He kind of left her alone. And then, oh, yeah, I almost completely forgot about it because we never cut back to it. Somebody took Penny. I'm curious, does that have something to do with Irene? Is that like a McAllister thing? Or it might, well, I'm about to say not unless it's a library thing, but it's like not unless they think, Penny, it's the Penny from the library who somehow managed to escape the underworld or something. That might be what they're thinking, and they might drag him down there. And it's like, no, Penny's actually here. And then maybe Penny forty and Penny twenty three might meet in that regard, or like I said, it might be an Irene thing because Shoshana accidentally removed the spell on Julia, but it might have had bigger ramifications than anyone realized. Like, I think she did manage to put it back on afterwards but i think it was enough time maybe it shattered the uh spell on the others in that moment as well to kind of now they're no longer concealed as well i don't know it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see what that ends up ultimately being but i did like kind of that whole situation of like it seems like the creature put elliot in that corner of his mind it's kind of like you know your remembrance uh as charlton had said um i thought it was kind of interesting because i was like huh like, I guess, like, as, like, I guess wherever the creature go, it carries with it all the people and apparently all the monsters it devour. Because those things that are inside of Elliot, those creatures he's running from, those are the creatures it killed from Black Spire and devoured. So, I guess that's how Charlton got there. Because we also, like, because I was wondering, too, like, whatever happened to Aura? Once again, we never found out how it went from Aura's body to Elliot's. But I guess it was just kind of like a, oh, it decided to just jump because it knew Elliot was someone that was important to Quentin. So, that's what that was all about. So... But it seems like Aura is gone forever, potentially, which is kind of sad because she tried to find her door and everything. So that's kind of interesting. I also love that Elliot's trying to che uh, teach uh, Charlton, like, fuck, you know, kind of how to properly use it and stuff like that. It's also interesting, too, because we learned a lot about Elliot in this episode, like some of his regrets and stuff like that. Some are things that we saw in the show and others being we didn't like for example like him growing up the whole taylor situation now that's sad for him it's like hating yourself is one thing because the whole thing he killed that dude logan who was like a bully to him that's the first time he ever used magic and it was to kill one of his bullies with a school bus well, that's brutal as hell but also like you know turning against someone else and hurting someone else because of not liking yourself like i guess like to make it seem like, you know, because he was probably trying to deal with the whole fact is that he was gay. There was probably something between him and Taylor. And maybe Taylor made a move or something. And then, like, to fit in with everyone else, Elliot probably turned against Taylor. You know, it's probably one of his biggest regrets. But it seems like the whole Quentin situation. And I guess that all ultimately ends up tying together when you actually think about it in the long run. I even love that line from him being like, oh, you know... Uh, brace yourself, guys. Going forward from here, it's going to be daddy issues and dicks. Because um, he bounced from all these different memories trying to find the door. I also love that he created, like, uh, versions of Finn, Quentin, and Margot in his head. Uh, 
Three of which are like different versions of themselves that we've seen over the course of the series. I thought that was kind of neat. He specifically chose him from specific points in the series. I thought that was kind of uh, pretty neat. Uh, and Margot, when she ended up fighting one of the monsters and kicking it down and being like, go. And even Quentin being like, I'll sacrifice myself for you. He's like, I know you're not real, Quentin, but the fact of the matter is it's very sweet of you. He's like, well, yeah, that's what you do for the person you love. And that's what made him ultimately figure out like what his side of himself is that he pushed away, you know? But that is the thing. I'm wondering why did a creature push... I mean, it's maybe it's just kind of like depending on the person. Because like it, cause Charlton was kind of like, normally this thing rips people apart the moment it possesses their body. But him and obviously Aura and even Elliot survived. So maybe it always does this. Maybe it's just kind of like if your subconscious is strong enough, you can hide yourself away in your happy moments and stuff like that. I don't know, I was curious, because I was like, oh, is this just going to be an Elliot who doesn't know what's going on? But it's like, no, given enough time, his memory came back. He's like, oh, yeah, I shot you. Which, you know, Charlton was like, eh, it's okay. It was better than kind of, you know, because you kind of get lost in your your remembrances, your, your happy place, you know. So you kind of get stuck there, so you kind of forget, lose track of time and everything. So there's that. So luckily, uh, Quentin was, I mean, uh, Elliot was able to reach Quentin in time to tell him, like, hey, I'm still in here, which, you know, it's interesting because all that stuff is happening while all the stuff is going down in Fillory, like Finn's having a breakdown, it's like the final lay, laying under the clothes of, the widow has to lay under the clothes of her dead husband, I'm wondering does everyone typically have those many clothes, I feel like that was just Elliot, like Elliot having that many clothes, which is kind of like, I think you typically wouldn't have to bury yourself under that many clothes, but then again, maybe it's just because I, I personally don't have that many clothes, I, I really don't, like I kind of wear the same stuff over and over again. Plenty of videos go kind of prove that. But like I said, I'm wondering, do kings typically have that many clothes? Or once again, is that just, you know, Elliot, you know? So it's hard to say. But I love that moment of like, because obviously Margot is trying to, you know, handle everything while everyone else is kind of like dealing with the whole like, oh, you know, you know, Elliot's gone and, you know, everyone's kind of heartbroken about it. Obviously Finn is too. But, like, Margot's the one that's kind of like, no, we got to get shit done. And, and, you know, she brings up, you know, Finn's like, have you cried? And Margot's like, if I cry, I won't stop crying. And I, someone needs to be here to rule Fillory, so I have to put my shit aside so I can handle all of this, you know? And then, you know, it turns out what's inside the box is a lizard, a talking lizard, but it's not talking because apparently all the animals in Fillory are not talking for whatever reason. So, there's that. Uh, what's also, you know, interesting is, like, obviously, like, I'm curious to see what happens when Margot learns the news of, like, oh, yeah, Elliot's still alive, so that's going to be put a little pep in her step. I think that's going to make her go back to kind of being the same Margot that she was. To be fair, I think we're going to still see this Margot who's going to try her best to do whatever it takes to save, you know, Elliot. But let's not forget uh, Lord Fresh's thing of, like, she's going to learn what it's like to rule alone or something like that. Maybe it's referencing all of this as going down right now, or maybe it's leading to the future that, whatever that really is. We'll, we'll kind of have to wait and see what goes on. Um, kind of continuing the whole thing about Alice and Quentin. Alice was like, okay, like, where when this is all said and done, just pick a place. You know, the book will pick a place, and I will go there where it's telling me I need to go, and I'll stay there forever. And... It does. We don't get to see what that place is, but I'm curious where it is, which is kind of sad, you know? It's like, I, I want Alice to be around, because for her, too, it's like she wants to make up for what she did before. It's just, she just doesn't have the chance to. I mean, especially everything she did, busting out of the library to, you know, try and save Quentin and stuff like that, you know? So... Uh, there's also the whole Iris situation. What an asshole showing up blaming Julia. It's like, oh, this is all your fault. You let the creature out of, out of it. Because it's also interesting because that's what Shoshana was like. Yeah, don't trust Iris because she asked Bacchus to do something. Bacchus never told me about, which is crazy because Bacchus told me everything. But whatever it was, it's like the fact is that he didn't want to talk about it. I mean, it was some serious shit. And Shoshana was like, don't trust Iris because of that. Which, once again, Iris is a dick. Because she shows up and is like, oh, look at you. The fact is she says that basically... Julia is caught between both worlds. She's powerless like a human, but she's immortal like a god. So, oh, having to get to see everyone that you care about grow old and die and you just keep going on. The fact is that she's basically threatened like, oh yeah, don't fuck it up or I'll come after you again. And she's there to kind of gloat and everything and just be... Which is kind of interesting considering like, oh, like how super excited she was to meet Julia and stuff before... And now it's like, oh, it's this. And when it all came down to it, she was willing to kill um, 
Julia, you know, because I, oh, you screwed up, this is all your fault, I'm about to kill her, when Shoshana took the blow for her, which is, like, so disheartening. It's like, oh, Shoshana, no! I thought we, it would have been so sick if you were able to kick it with Julia for a while, because even it was sweet, because she was like, oh, the reason why I helped that creature out was because it already killed one god that I was looking after. I, I couldn't take the chance he might kill another, that being Julia. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. You know, so... And I love that they spun it, being like, no, we look what we did for you. We brought Iris to you. We couldn't help tell you because she was watching us and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, okay. So we end up learning from this thing, which apparently this thing can also time travel, too, on its own whim. Because it's like, oh, yeah, I went to Mesopotamia. Not what I remember it to be, but it's like before, it was getting frustrated with the place. But then it realized, like, oh, it focuses its energy. And then, like, these pieces... These organs light up. So it turns out they're all pieces to a body. So I'm assuming these are all pieces to its body. I guess all the gods a long time ago took this creature and ripped its body into different pieces. And different gods hold those different organs and pieces. And once all pieces come together, the body can be fully reunited and it gets its body back. I guess once it gets its body back, it gets all its memories back and it gets back its full strength. So, I mean, it kills gods pretty easily because even Iris was kind of taken out like it was nothing. So, but part of me was like... Honestly, I don't feel that bad about it. The Bacchus situation, I kind of felt bad for, especially because of the Josh situation. But the fact is, it's like Iris was trying to kill Julia. It's like, yeah, nah. I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. It, it still sucks, but it's kind of like, eh. You know, it's not like, it, not like you were that great of a person, so. Or rather, that great of a god, so. Like I said, a lot of interesting things went down this episode. Um, I'm very interested to see where all of this is going to take us going forward. You know, I'm also curious, like, does that, now I'm sitting here thinking about it. Uh, you know, if Alice is going to go anywhere, it'd be nice if she ran into Santa Claus again. Because I think Santa Claus might be able to help her with her redemption arc and everything. Which is so funny because, like, uh... Plover was kind of saying, like, the opposite of being, like, basically, uh, apologized for what you did, but not who you are, which I guess you could make the argument that she kind of did, uh, maybe down that route, but, um, yeah, it'd be kind of nice if her and, uh, Santa Claus cross paths again, you know, so, like I said, I'm so curious to see how this all plays out, what this all, the next episode has in store for us with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.